Hello on the Rockers. We go back to Broadway tonight with Courtney Reed, currently starred in Moulin Rouge, and Jelani Remy, currently starred in Back to the Future, as we talk about their careers and their upcoming vampire musical. Yes, you heard that right. We also welcome back our guest co-host, Broadway aficionado, Michael Ferreira, hot off of his annual New York Broadway tour, with me, your favorite host with the sassy most. Raise a glass with the drinks begin. It's On the Rocks 2024, baby. <laughs> Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Glass in your seat, It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord have mercy, buttons and bows and pantyhose. On the Rocks podcast, the place where we're too glam to give a damn. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at On the Rocks in there and on Facebook, On the Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a pride, wedding, free roll, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I'll show up. Info at On the Rocks Radio Show.com. Also send us your comments, your guest requests, and your guest questions. We got plenty of questions. Info at On the Rocks Radio Show.com. Again, the show's presented by Straw Hat Media. You can watch and or listen to now our over 340 episodes at On the Rocks Radio Show.com for free. You can watch us on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire TV on the Outit.tv app. Facebook Watch, streaming with Pride on SVTV and on Channel 31 on, in Boston, of all places. Uh, we proudly tape the show at UBN <laughs> Go Studios, your one-stop place for prod, uh, bra. I can't even talk. I'm still, I'm still recovering from New Year's Eve. All right, let's get the show on the road. Returning to On the Rocks, Michael Ferreira has over 20 years' experience working in the LGBTQ plus uh, nonprofit community. Among his accomplishments, he started a youth mentoring program called LifeWorks that is approaching its 20th anniversary. And then as an executive director, he led the effort to raise almost $5 million to fund an AIDS monument in West Hollywood that will break ground next year. He's currently part of a new organization called Out Athlete Fund that will help support LGBTQ plus elite athletes as they train for collegiate, national, and international competitions while providing a safe and inclusive space for the athletes and fans to gather and experience those competitions live. Michael had an early career in the theater from the age of seven and has continued his love and support for theater by keeping it central in both his personal and professional lives. Um, he truly credits the performing arts for saving his life in his teens and 20s, and he has seen just about every Broadway show every year and has rubbed elbows... <clears throat> and other body parts with numerous personalities from musical theater, allegedly. Please welcome back to the show, Michael Ferreira. Hey. I love that. We have the picture up there with uh, Kevin and I, my friend, best friend Kevin and I, with Jelani on the... On the uh, on the, um, God, I can't talk either. I think it's, it, <laughs> we're just it must so be excited. contagious. No, I know, no. We're, we're just excited because um, we love Broadway. And funny everyone's... Girl. That's yeah. where it was. It was on the Funny Girl stage because of Jelani. Funny Girl. <laughs> well, Jelani helped me realize a dream uh, last year when he brought me backstage to meet Leia Michelle. Oh, so, yes. God, I want the tea on that one. <laughs> anyway, um, and at the end of the show, you're gonna uh, you're gonna review the the shows that you mm -hmm. saw this current year. Yes, but after Jelani leaves, and I'll talk about Back yeah. to the Future. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you go every year with a yeah. group of friends, and you see every show. It's probably been you know like thirty years running, like or even more that every year Christmas week, yeah, um, or the week after Christmas, yeah, we go and and we see as many shows as we can in four days. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you spent New Year's Eve at 54 Below? 54 Below with Aaron Tveit. With, with an open bar? With an open bar. See, I don't know if I'm more <laughs> excited about the open bar part of it or Aaron Tveit. I mean, they're both equally it, Yeah. Enjoyable. Equally fabulous. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we're going to get to your Broadway review, um, and you're going to help me because, uh, like we said, you have a little connection here uh -huh. today, and it's a small world, because I happen to mention that we had Jelani on the show, and yeah. you're like, oh, I know him. Oh, oh, I know Jelani. I know him. <laughs> okay. Let's bring on our Broadway belters. Uh, Corny Reed is best known for originating the role of Princess Jasmine in Disney's smash Broadway hit Aladdin, in which she received a Grammy nomination, by the way. You can see her currently in Moulin Rouge. You know, that, that little show on Broadway as a sparkling diamond, <laughs> uh, and for which she originated the role on the national tour, by the way. Julie, yeah, tour, Julie B. What is that? <laughs> backstage, honey. Oh, oh my we're God. actually backstage at the yeah. Broadway Theater. We are back. We are backstage. We are live backstage. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Pre-pandemic, she was seen in, in, in Lauren E's award-winning play, Cambodian Rock Band, at the Signature Theater. She's also had the honor of being a part of the closing company of the Tony Award-winning musical, In the Heights. Mm. She made her Broadway debut in Mamma Mia. 
Um, and there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of TV credits as well. Um, one in particular that I'm going to grill her about. Um, she's also a proud co-producer of Disney Princess, the concert that can be seen all over the world. Please welcome Courtney Reed. <laughs> <laughs> there she is backstage. Um, also, backstage. <laughs> I, I, I love it. That's so exciting. Like, I feel that like I'm, very I'm, cool. I'm there. Yeah. Um, also joining us, as we mentioned, uh, Jelani Remy, uh, a New Jersey native who has started numerous shows on the Great White Way, including Eight Too Proud, Smokey Joe's Cafe, The Lion King, and Cabaret. He's currently starring on Broadway in Back to the Future, the musical. He's a Paper Mill Playhouse rising star and a Cheetah Rivera Award recipient, by the way. He and Courtney will be seen in Blood Love, a vampire musical at Joe's Pub in New York City on January 15th, um, alongside American Idol's uh, Constantine, who we love Constantine as mm-hmm. well. Um, and we're going to be getting a peek at the musical um, at the end of our show today, so stay yeah. tuned for that. Please welcome Jelani Remy. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey. Hello, 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 hello. And just a little aside, he not only was in The Lion King, but he is still the longest-running Simba. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I have something to tell you both. Um, the reason why you have trouble speaking is because you've officially been virtually bitten. Oh, uh-huh. oh, 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 blood love. We'll get we'll pull from, from blood right. love. And the, and the only remedy is to come see the blood love concert January 15th at Joe's Pub. One in night. City. <laughs> one night. For and one night only. We're going to find out all about it because I got the press release. I was like, huh, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm very excited. But I want to start the show kind of talking about the the early years. You know, we know all about your success that both of you had on, on Broadway. Um, and I know Courtney started at a very early age. Um, getting the big role as a mouse in Cinderella. <laughs> wow. um, and then you got the starring role in Annie, by the way. Uh, but you kind of were influenced by your older sister? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, she just she started taking dance and basically everything she did, I wanted to do. And so she took dance. I took dance. She was in children's theater. I was in children's theater. And then I really caught the bug. And she was like, not for me. This is just a hobby. And I was like, <laughs> If I don't do this for the rest of my life, I'll die. <laughs> That's my life. Um, and Jelani, you kind of came into a little bit later. Um, you wanted to be a music teacher. Yeah, well, I love all things education. My mom is a teacher, so I, I, I definitely um, gravitated towards that. I had a play set as a kid that was like a teacher play set that you get from like or like like the the trading companies, and like you can like get yeah. your own like papers to grade. And I was very busy <laughs> with after school programs. All things made up by myself. Um, and, you know, boys didn't really do theater. You know, um, I, I did the sports thing as well. And I, yeah. I just felt like something was missing. And I found myself getting out of, like, doing conditioning um, exercises by doing impersonations of the coaches. <laughs> which, in hindsight, <laughs> that's acting, baby. That's showbiz, baby. Exactly and, right. Uh, I would literally run up in my, my football, I'm going to say costume now, but it's definitely a, a uniform, <laughs> but, and sing the national anthem, you know? And, and also, I'd choreograph the cheerleading routines on the side, too. So I was always sort of involved in the arts. I knew that, that it was my calling, my passion, but I, I was just sort of afraid to do it until a teacher sort of pushed me to do it, and I've never looked back. It was, uh, she made me find my purpose. In uh, Grease the Musical, by the way, that you did in high school. You better do your research. Yes, I played. I better. You guessed it. I played Duty in Grease. Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> and he sings that song, Those Magic Changes, and I sang it for the first time in front of like the school, and people clapped, and I'd never felt a feeling like that before in my life. Well, wow. and that song never... gets up there too. By yeah, the way, it's sure like oh, does. oh, oh, I was, I was terrible. I was terrible. But <laughs> the point was, um, it was that feeling. I, fa- I, I never felt that feeling. I always wanted, I always wanted to feel that. I, I want to bottle that feeling up and take it. And so I want to get. I went to theater camp and you know mm-hmm. college for musical theater and. The rest is my story. You got no problem hitting those notes now. Those notes now. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, I want to talk about. Um, did you ever think, growing up in the very, very early, did you ever think that we would end up having so much diversity in casting on Broadway? You know, we've really been enjoying it the last uh, few years, and it's really been called into question. Um, did you kind of have that inkling growing up, or even some of your early auditions that that was the direction that things were going in? You know, uh, I, my, my parents are Caribbean, right? And so they're immigrants. So they came here telling me that I can do whatever. You know, you, you have the tools to be whatever you want to be. Don't let anybody hold you back. And I, I sort of brought that into my idea of casting. I wanted to jump in and change people's minds, right? So I want to be seen for duty. I want to be seen for Danny. You know, I want to yeah. 
sort of be make people think like wh- why not you know why not and so even then and i had an audition for moulin rouge um <laughs> oh. as christian <laughs> that went pretty well but you know it, I, I think it's important to to have representation because it matters so much and blood love is definitely going to be bringing that but also this theater community we we've been through a lot you know with the panorama panacotta pangea where we had to sort of re <laughs> reevaluate you know what what works and what doesn't work um, and Courtney, I know you, you've uh, you've talked openly about you know some of the difficulties of being uh, what's considered mixed race. It's it, it could be a detriment. It could be a good thing. Can you expand on that j- just a bit? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you know I'm almost the opposite of of Jelani. I I I always it's like you know what you see, and I whenever I saw theater, I I didn't see myself represented on stage, and yeah. so you know I just kind of thought, well, I guess I'll just you know play Asian characters, but then people didn't see me as Asian. And then, you know, uh, uh, a lot of Latin shows started coming out and those were only the shows that I could audition for. And then it was like, you know, it's such a different time. I feel like I'm not old, but my gosh, I've lived a whole life through this industry where it shows, you know, you know, you can play different ethnicities. Now you can't play different ethnicities and, you know, um, whatever you look like, they can't ask you your ethnicity in the room. Now they can. It's like it's like a total ebb and flow. And I'm totally on the ride. But it's it's difficult because when you're mixed, you're just like not one of enough. You know, so it's my agents had to tell me they were like, listen, you just have to audition for something that says mixed ethnicity now. And so it I'm just kind of like on the train, I'm on the ride and I'm open for whatever they'll have me as, you know, it's (laughs) it's certainly been working. But can you imagine a youth going to see their first Broadway show and seeing themselves represented in a way that wasn't before? I mean, what an exciting time we are. And Michael, for having you seen Broadway shows for I don't know how how many years in a row, you've seen that shift too as an audience member. Oh, it's stark. It really is stark. And it's wonderful because, you know, the the depth and the breadth and the 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 experience of having all of the diversity on stage i mean it just it makes every show better um it makes every show different and deeper like i said and and uh, i i i mean i love it and and i grew up you know in connecticut which isn't a bastion of diversity and so to to see to see things change um has been really you know really wonderful and i mean even high school people were cast that way you know like people were cast according to you know Asian in an Asian role, you know, black person in a black person role. And, you know, it, it's just, it's so limiting. And it's, and it's not written that way. It's that nobody ordained that. It was just, yeah, I guess probably the people who are doing the casting just didn't have any imagination. I remember as a kid, I grew up in Orange County, which was very conservative and mm-hmm. very, very white. Uh, even though, you know, I thought I was talented, I was always in the ensemble of every single musical and I could never get past that. So mm-hmm. I just started doing theater elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm super, super nosy and I love um, I love to hear about education because, again, we both know how successful you are. Um, but, you know, there's always that area of acting or performing that's maybe not our favorite. So I want to talk a bit about your education. Courtney, Chicago College of Performing Arts. And Jelani studied at the Paper Mill Playhouse as a youth, by the way, and uh, the Montclair State for Musical Theater. I want to know from both of you, what were your best classes and what classes were, shall we say, challenging? <laughs> oh musical theater history yes oh oh that was really tough for me i i like i did i wasn't like a musical theater person growing up like i i listened to pop music so like britney spears and nsync they like britney and christina and jessica Simpson. those were like my girls and so i was always Mm -hmm. listening to pop music and everyone was listening to you know, show tunes and they would be like, Oh my gosh, this song from parade. I'm like, what's parade? You know, like I had no idea what this stuff was. So when musical theater history came in, it was like, Oh my gosh, I had to learn like the Bible, you know? And it was a really tough class and they were so hard on us. And everyone was like, why don't you understand this? Like, I don't know. (laughs) People like me, like, how can you not know that? Yeah. (laughs) Well, but it's true. You hadn't seen a Broadway show before you got cast in Mamma Mia, right? Correct. Wow. You really did your research. Well, no, I just think that's so fascinating. It's like, oh, hi, I've never seen a show, but go ahead and we're going to cast you in your yeah, debut yeah. on Broadway. Like, that doesn't happen She's often. That good. Yeah. That's a star. It, that's a star. Yeah. Yeah. That's a star. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> um, what about you, Kalani? Yeah. The hardest thing for me was college. Um, I, I, again, because boys didn't dance. I yeah. didn't grow up in the dance mm-hmm. world. So dance came later. Um, the, the discipline of being on time for ballet class. 
and like, getting ready for that 7 a.m. class because at 701 the door is closed do you know what I mean um and for a college kid who when I come in my leopard print tights she didn't think that was that fun she wanted me to come in like the traditional ballet garb and mm. pay true to it and I came from that musical theater world where I was like this is supposed to be fun so it was really learning to respect the foundation of the craft mm. it was tricky of, of the ballet because it was just so early well, yeah. and, and so I want to talk to both of you about like your, your your national touring because it's that kind of discipline you kind of need. And I know Jelani, you started your national tour with High School Musical like right after college. As a young kid, I can imagine that's exciting, but also a little dangerous because you're traveling from city to city. You're with a crew, and then you know you're young. Shenanigans could happen. You could be a little irresponsible. What did you learn? Um, what, what did you both learn most from doing your first national tour? What did you learn most about the biz? Oh, I learned so much about myself. I learned about, you know, <laughs> what not to do. Um, but I also <laughs> learned that, like what this is. And ha- people who n- tour with shows are literally warriors because you have to go to different climates. You have to go to different different cities and, and just adapt. You have to adapt and find you find your happiness and find your what you, it's like. It's like Survivor. You know what I mean? On top of putting together a show. So it, I, I, I'm so grateful for that experience. And I learned so much about, you know, just it, it was a fast track of, of, of growing up and figuring it out with your new chosen family. So it was like I went from college to like almost college again <laughs> yeah, in a way. Yeah. Um, cause, cause you're sort of in this bubble of people that, that you fall in love with, you, you fall in love with and go through this journey with. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Now, cause we have, we have a bunch of actors that, that watch the show as well. So what advice or what are some of the things that you did that you probably wouldn't do again <laughs> that you learned like, Oh, that's not cool to do on a national tour. Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's not he's not gonna share. <laughs> you know what's inter- no, it's interesting because you know, I started this is gonna sound really like ooh, but I started on Broadway and then I right. did like, you know, ten years later did my first ever like first national tour, which was really kind of a dream tour. I mean, we had sit downs for months in like LA and San Francisco and Chicago, which is where I was living at the time during the pandemic. I would say it was like pretty easy considering I mean it was definitely the most demanding role I'd ever done and I'm older now so I'm not like I'm not like you know trying to hook up with the people in the cast and doing <laughs> you know there's a phrase uh, it's called blanking where you eat right I yeah. am not about that yeah so right. um you know I, I had a pretty dreamy experience and everyone was pretty amazing I mean I like I kind of like miss tour in a sense because it's sort of on a, in a bubble. The stakes are a little bit lower on Broadway. You just like never know who's going to be in the house, just like mm. judging you. Yeah, you know. Uh did you hear Natalie Portman was at our show the other day? What? Natalie Portman was in the second row of Back oh, to the Future, like wow. looking so beautiful and like with her kids and just like. Oh, <laughs> no. You're like, oh. Wow! Wow! What a dream. Anyway, yeah, touring is great. <laughs> no, gosh, <yeah. laughs> Although you know, like one thing that I that I've noticed in getting to know you, Jelani, and that I notice amongst um, my other actor friends that are in based in New York and doing the shows, and I, I think Courtney had chosen you too, is that you know you really are part of a community. Um, and you know, I know I watched Jelani. We walked into to Glasshouse Tavern together after the show, and you know everybody knows you, and you know them, and there's there's obvious affection. Um, I don't see the competition. I don't see the the ugliness. I don't see the bitchiness. I actually see a lot of people who appreciate each other for what they're doing and for their talents. But I, I, mean, I wonder if that's that's your experience and, and how you got there and how you how you experienced the community there on Broadway. Well, it goes with that whole, you know, we are all different and beautiful in our own ways. And, and this, this community celebrates that. And there's space for everyone. And it's so nice to eat with your team, not compete with your team. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, there, there's space for, for, for you. There's space for me. And we all get to just share and, and, and be. And that's, that's the wonderful thing about this community is that there are so everyone's from a different walk of life. And we're all here for that common goal just to to make art and to be artists. And and I'm celebrated by my fellow artist successes. Yeah. And I will say I have to just jump in and say that Jelani is a very special kind of performer because you you I mean, I, I think our community in general is this way. Yes. 
but I think you go above and beyond. You make people feel very comfortable. You don't, you have, you have such a successful career, but you don't walk around like you're better than anyone else. You treat everyone as equals. And I think like, you know, people can really learn from you and how you just like walk in life. Just walk, you know, it's like, if you, ha- if I have any advice, I'm gonna Venmo you for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Venmo. Venmo. But we also, Courtney Reed and I had so much fun, you know, uh, being in New York together when she was doing Princess Jasmine and I was doing Simba. We got to do all these fun Disney gigs together. And like oh, when wow, I tell you the classic. guttural laughs and the amount of like cookie trays we would sneak away with. Um, <laughs> We had so much fun, and it, so much it, fun. It's, we we lead with love, and like we're lucky. You know what I mean? We're lucky because people, um, so many people, even my students, they want to be where we're at. And like, if you're not enjoying it and 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 sharing it, and and uh, what's what are we doing? What's you the know? point? So, yeah. So yeah. any opportunity I get to to break bread or be with or celebrate or cheer on or help out, even you know, even in our outreach programs or in our education, you know, that we all do, um, it's important. So speaking about Disney, that is something that you share. You know, it's like, I, I want to know from uh, creating a character point of view, uh, what does it take to be a Disney princess or a Disney prince? I consider Simba a prince because he's the next in line for yeah. royalty. Um, mm. So how do you... Oh, there he is. In all his glory, I might add. I'm like, hello, that's my wallpaper. No, but... <laughs> Beautiful. But when, you, when coming to a Disney character that we all know from the animated version, but as an actor, what was your creative process in approaching Jasmine to make her different, to not just make her the animated copycat, and also for Simba, and you had played the role for so long, what was your starting point when uh, starting those characters or learning that you were going to be playing those characters? Oh, gosh. I think I think in so many ways, I went, the way that I approached it was honoring Linda Larkin and also uh, Leia Salonga, like honoring yeah. what they did to the character and how they originated it and how they made it. Like they made those, that character so alive and with so much heart. And I think that because I watched that film over and over again, so many of those line reads were like in my body. So I was like, listen, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think with anything as a performer, you always bring so much of yourself to the performance. Like no matter what you try to do, even if you try to like really become a chameleon, you bring so much of yourself to it. And I think I trusted in my creative team that they were going to be like, that choice is whack. Like, Please don't do that. You know, I trusted my director and and the whole team to say, like, to guide me in the right direction. And I also had to really come to terms with the fact that, you know, I wasn't going to make everyone happy. I wasn't going to look exactly like what everyone wanted me to look like. And I wasn't going to sound exactly what everyone wanted me to look like. And that was actually going to be okay. And that took me like years to oh, yeah, get over. Sean, Sean you have food at the yeah. stage door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, and it's crazy because doing um, Moulin Rouge is kind of the same thing. It's like right. a movie that's made into a musical. And so, you know, I just kind of have to lead with um, just like trusting myself and my team. Well, and an audience has uh, a predisposition as what they want to see. And it's like, you know, we don't want to have a, a, a copy, but an audience wants to experience some of the same textures of characters that we all know and love. I mean, how many times have we seen Lion King? How many times have we seen um, a, Aladdin? So it's like, you know, we feel like we know these characters. And sometimes I feel, you know, when the character's totally redone, the audience can feel a little cheated or not like in so the, the, the story. But that's a fine line. Yeah. Mm. Oh, totally. <laughs> and same with Back to yeah. the Future now for, for Jelani. But uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's a responsibility, right, to bring these iconic characters to life. And I, as Simba, I, I actually started as the back legs of the rhinoceros first. Right. So I <laughs> you were the rump. The ensemble for little, I was the rump. I was the rump, rump, rump. But I had a beautiful blueprint of Clifton Oliver, who was the Simba at the time. And um, I got to see him do his beautiful role that um, I, I just was in awe of. So I got to sort of, he used that blueprint as a guide and then sort of, Pepper and Jelani into that, and um, I, I and with the help of the team of, of directors and choreographers, they they sort of helped me find my Simba, and and that that translated to studying the kids that were in the show. I used to study the young Simbas because they were all so different, and there's two kids that would betrayed every show, and I'd study them and their isms, and I put that mm. into my show, and that helped me sort of oh, do wow. it for so long. Love that, and keep it fresh and exciting. And um, someone uh, or Rafiki told me, baby. There is one. There is somebody seeing this show for the first time, yep. or there is somebody seeing this show for the last time. 
You have to give them something to remember. <laughs> uh, that's really really good, good advice wow yeah i love that yeah um i want to talk about the pressure of originating a role on on broadway like jelani we know you're doing back to the future of obviously it started in london but you are originating the role on on broadway which is a whole whole different creature um and Courtney, yeah. also you know originating a role like I want to know what kind of pressure during rehearsals, during the press for that, how do you balance that with, you know, I need to focus on my performance and I need to not think about all of the pressure that that comes with that. This is my first origination and it's been um, a dream come true. And I have to thank the team of Back to the Future for that, coming from the producers to the writer, Bob Gale, to the director, John Rando, um, who we it was a safe space to play in and a safe space to like explore and the best idea won and they were like well you know well we have Jelani so let's try this Jelani you can do this right try this or what about that or even the choreographer Chris Bailey like it was just a wonderful collaboration on top of you know working with Roger Bart and Hugh Coles who did the show in the West End so right. to have their sort of their 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 foundation um it was just like You'll see the show. It's just pure joy because we all got to sort of have fun putting it together and and playing. It, it, br- it brought me back to why I started it. We get to play, and we get to play every day and have fun doing it. And this this show, Back to the Future, is super special because it's alive. It, and it's it, every show is is so um, unique because it's it's so alive and there's a, like a vaudevillian humor and, and community del art that that roger and casey likes get roger Bart and casey likes get to do um that every show you're never going to get that same show again and that's that's it's it's just so special and so alive and so so fun to be part of um i i'm gonna be honest when i first heard that back to the future was a musical i was like what how is that even gonna work like what mm-hmm. makes this show work because audiences and critics love the show yeah, what makes it work is that it's so true to the movie, the, but then there's this like Broadway, you know, there's like Broadway yeah. flair that that just gives it that extra ump, and that, and these characters are larger than life, but also staying true to to the wonderful wonderful nerdism that is Back to the Future. There's such a fun culture, and the tech is is it's just the perfect recipe to bring this movie to the Broadway stage. Um, and Courtney, can, can you talk a little bit about the pressure of originating a, a role and? getting a Grammy nomination, by the way, which you didn't even uh, expect, right? Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know that that (laughs) musicals had Grammy nominations. I was like, what? For your consideration. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, right? Yeah. For your consideration, Eddie. Yeah, I, you know, I think one lesson that I take away from originating a role is I wish that if I could go back, I would have just lowered the stakes a little bit. Interesting. I have a dear friend who is going to be originating in, in the notebook that's coming in. And he's like asking me so much of, of uh, he's like asking advice. And I'm just like, just don't put so much pressure on yourself to be perfect. Cause just in this business. And I think what, that's the beauty of live theater. It's like, just like Jelani saying, every show is different. And so you really oh, like, Oh my God, everyone's hungry. <laughs> um, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, just, just like you could do, you could only do the best that you can in the moment that you're in. And, you know, I felt very young and I felt like, you know, I just wasn't ever good enough. And, and now I just, I'm like approaching Moulin Rouge in like a totally different way. I'm like, this is me. I'm not a hundred percent tonight, but this, this is the best that you're going to get. And I think that that's, you know, if I if to have to give any advice to like other performers, it's just like you, you already put so much pressure on yourself and then the whole team and like everybody and they just wanted to be so perfect. But um, one of the best things too, and, and Jelani, you reminded me of this was that Aladdin was a musical comedy. And so I think one of the mm-hmm. best parts was that we got to, you know, in the rewrites, we got to play and do different comedy bits like every night and see what worked. And I think That's that fun. was how it sort of like eased the pressure of going like, we're in a comedy and people are laughing and they're having a good time. It's just like, it's not that deep. We're not, you know, it's not brain surgery. <laughs> It's so refreshing to hear that um, that people are allowing that and encouraging yeah. that for folks like you who have so many talents um, that you shouldn't be handicapped. But you, we've heard in the past the stories of like, you know, shows like Les Mis or Miss Saigon and stuff like that, where the creators, the rumors anyway, were that 
everybody had to do it exactly the same way. And I think that takes away your authenticity as a performer uh, to be pigeonholed or to be limited like that. And I think it's so great. Jaylani was talking to me about you know their ability, your ability to play during rehearsals, and you mentioned again tonight. So I, I can tell that that was that was really important to you, and I, I just think that's so refreshing. Absolutely. Well, flag on the play. Let's not get crazy. Like, I'm not going to be giving you like like raps in Les Mis. I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. and give you something totally Maybe it's different. time. Yeah. I, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's important to stay true to the piece. Mm-hmm. But the, you know, there, there's a there's a, there's a limit. You know, there, there, there's a, there's a space, and and there's there's you gotta you know definitely be true to the piece. Yeah. <laughs> within the realm. Yeah, within, within the, the realm. realm. Yeah. Within the realm. But don't yes. get crazy. You know? <laughs> Back from the actor's aspect, you know, uh, the business side of being an actor is just as important as the skill side uh, for continued success. I want to know as an actor, how do you know when it's time to step away for a show or when your time is done or when you even say no to a certain role or audition? Um, Because that's got to be a difficult choice. Do I stick with a show that's paying my bills regularly for a chance at something else? How do you know when it's time? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I just feel it. If you're you not, feel if, it. I'm not, if I'm not having fun, I'm out. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, if your heart's not in it, you know, someone else should do it. You know, um, mm. I, I. But I've been blessed. Like I love this. I, I love it. I'm. I'm. I'm so fortunate to be able to to perform. You know, eight shows a week. Um, and but I will say now, I I don't want to take on too much. You know, so I'm careful with what I choose. You know, extracurricular projects or other things that that will require a lot of time and and a lot of. Um, you know, self, because you have to save your save save some for yourself. One, but save save it for the it, duration of your of your, you know, work load. Oh my gosh, I have I I am notorious for sitting in shows. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like, if I love something, I you know it's like if I love a sandwich, I'll eat the same sandwich every single day. For I'm actually that way too. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. So that way, and you know, like I this is I'll be coming up on like two years in Moulin Rouge. I did Aladdin for four years. Plus, I did it on the West End a national tour for five weeks. Yeah. Like, um, I did in the Heights for several years. I did Mamma Mia for three years. Like, I I just love it, and I'm. And, and the moment that I stop loving it, just like Jelani says, the moment I stop loving it or I'm not like my heart isn't fully into it, I'm going like, yeah, I think it's time to move on to the next project. But it takes me a while because I tend to really love things. But I, I think I just get very, very lucky. And I have a like an incredible cast of people that treat me so well. And usually the teams treat me very well and the companies and the producers. Um, but yeah, you know, you come across the friends that are like, you're like, how's your show? And they're like, it is what it is, you know. Oh. And I'm like, oh, you should probably leave then. Yeah. yeah. Like somebody like, who is like, you're on Broadway. Really yeah. Yep. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mental health aspect of it. You know, mental health is something we've talked about a lot openly in the last few years as well, which, thank God, because mental health is an important part of your acting career. When you're in a show, when you're doing so many shows per week, um, and then you get into this kind of schedule like that, how how do you maintain your mental health to keep your identity away from, this is the role that I'm playing? Well, wow. Wow. I That's feel like great- you've always you've always been the girl on the swing though. That's why it's hard for me to, to know this for you, Courtney, because you've always been that girl, that beautiful girly on the swing. Do you know what I mean? So it's hard to differentiate. You know what I mean? Because you're our diamond princess. Um, I think That's your drag name, Courtney, like- by the way, is Diamond Princess. Diamond princess. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important just to carve out little things that make you happy. You know, one of the things I loved about Courtney when she got to the city is that she introduced me to matcha. You know, she was a matcha queen and like, you just, and, and I follow suit and like you, now anytime I want a little treat, like I can take 10 minutes and order a matcha and just enjoy it. And it's those little, like that 10 minutes is just for me, you know, or I like to do like foot massages. I love reflexology and that hour is just for me, you know, so it's important to carve out time just for yourself to recharge and to, to, to do something that you like. If it's that sandwich you want to have, have that sandwich. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's important to to take care of yourself, definitely, and to check in. Like I have a really good friend group as well, and I'm like, hey y'all, um, this happened today. Am I crazy? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Bounce ideas off of them and and vent is important too. And I also promote therapy. It's also important. Yes, hundred yes. percent. Our producers actually just told us that we're getting like an extra like five hundred dollars on top of what we already had before for a therapy stipend. So I'm like. Moulin Rouge is 
nailing it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause everyone's in therapy. I love therapy. And I think Jelani, you're right. Like having your, fr- it's like, you are who you hang out with. You have a good solid friend group that is just there for you and you're there for them whenever I, I fully support that. And that, and that that's huge. You just feel like you have that sort of like, cause my family's far away there in Chicago. And so, I mean, I can call them anytime, but to have your friends that are here, like on demand basically for you mm-hmm. is, is huge. It's like be selective about the people that you keep close, you know? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I also have a hover mother. So I have What's a, a, hover a, hover? Oh. a hover mother. Yeah. She calls all the time. Oh, she's there. You know what I mean? Like my mom, my mom's like my best friend. Got it. So, um, and he's at my knee or she's there. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Well, well, actually, it's funny. I, I told her one time she was smothering me and she was like, oh, she's from Barbados. And she's like, oh, really? Well, what word is in smother? Mother. <laughs> so, That's a good point. So, she's yeah, showing love. So, I, I, she keeps me humble. Oh, my gosh. I'm obsessed. Yeah, Jackie. Jackie. Jackie is a tour de force. A tour de force. All right, let's talk a little hot topic. Um, we know movie musicals are both in your wheelhouses, and we know Broadway is not stopping. You know, we have uh, Devil Wears Prada coming. We have The Notebook coming. Um, we've celebrated a lot of movie musicals. Um, what do you say to the critics who say that Broadway is losing its originality, that there's too many movie musicals out there? You being on both sides, having been an audience member in other shows and being stars of movie musicals. What's your kind of take on that? And what do you say to that kind of criticism? Courtney, would you like to go first? Because I would like to use the words of Tamara Judge. That's your opinion. Oh, I love Tamara <laughs> Judge sometimes. Yeah, that's, that, that is their opinion. If that's how they feel about it, that's how they feel about it. I think, you know, doing it right, the, the movie musicals, if you do it right and mm-hmm. pay homage and make people, give people that nostalgia and that feeling, but then something new, you're not doing anything wrong. I, I understand that there's, the, we had a blueprint, we have a guideline that we're working from. It's not completely original, but it's still, you know, something, something exciting. And it's something that people, are getting joy from and getting and getting you know mm-hmm. that Broadway fuel from. So I say two. I can't. Hold, I'm holding my phone, but two thumbs up. <laughs> two thumbs up. I th- I say. Um, I think we're living in a day and age where it's pretty difficult to make everyone happy. You used to kind of be able to make like majority happy. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> now it's like everyone's going to be unhappy about something, mm. even if they're trying, if their intentions are good. It's just sort of a time that we're living in. And I think that, you know, oh my gosh, maybe that was too good. Ca- Great. I'm going to be canceled. I just <laughs> know it. Canceled for this. Um, but, you know, I think movie musicals, I, I always think about it from the, from a producer standpoint. Like if I were going to, um, you know, say I'm like producing a show for the very first time, I'd probably put my money in a movie musical because it's going to be, you know, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Sound check. It's, it's, it's your movie musical. Yes. It's That's your it. movie musical. <laughs> I just like, you know, I'm like, dang, so many Broadway shows, they never recoup. And, yeah. uh, and you know, you're taking such a risk. I know it's less of a risk with a movie musical, but if it's done right, you know, like yeah, and I look power at, to them. Two thumbs up, just like you said. Just looking at the two that you're in and then add to one of my favorites of the recent past is uh, Some Like It Hot. And, you know, Scott Whitman mm-hmm. and, and Mark Shaman, you know, added that, that wonderful new plot line that I won't ruin for everybody. But, you know, like they really brought something different to it. And I think now something that a lot of people really loved in its original form gets to be loved in a different way and gets to be deepened and, and you know, just made you know, take a more modern take and let us see it a different way. And I think, yeah, I agree. I think that the critics are just people that are looking for something to be upset with or be unhappy with or unsatisfied or whatever. But these are fun shows. Well, and I think it's bringing younger audiences in back to the theater. Yeah. Um, it, it, in, in a big Ooh, way because you know so there's a comfort it's like it's a good welcome musical to bring somebody to because mm-hmm. there is a comfort level already yeah. um, there um, I want to talk and this kind of feeds into you know you get to meet all of the stars after the show like you've literally met everybody but it seems like with social media stage door and meet and greets now and, uh, and pop up appearances there's more of an assumption that an audience member can be involved with you get to know you um, and I want to know even with like social media how do you draw draw the line and be like, yes, I want to be taking the pictures with, I want to be uh, talking back and forth with my fans. I want to be part of that culture. Uh, but where do you draw the line? It's like, you know, this is my life and this is where I kind of need to pr- 
pr- protect myself because audiences also when they get to feel like they know you then they also let like then we get the keyboard warriors and then we get strange fans you know but like you've established a friendship with a lot of these people so i just want to know from an actor's point of view pr- protect yourself in this kind of easy access environment the way that I'm all the way involved with the fans is wild because um, I love it so much. And I met some wonderful people, you know, via stage door and, and, and wonderful, you know, relationships were made. So I, I'm a fan of it. I think you just have to be clear with your with your boundaries and, and, and you should trust your gut. And um, don't give out your phone number the first time. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I really, I really met some wonderful, beautiful friends just by saying hello and making that connection. And, and that that's for me what life is about, and, you know, making those connections and, and, and planting the seeds and seeing what happens. And I love meeting the fans. I love it. I do love it. Courtney, you know, I love it. I love it. I know. <laughs> You're so good. You're such a good man, Charlie Brown. I, I, I think it's like, it's just a delicate balance really, you know, because I think, I think a lot of times, especially if your show is like so crazy demanding, you, you know, you have only so much energy throughout mm-hmm. the day that you can reserve for the show. And sometimes you use it all and you empty the tank, but sometimes you have a little bit left over. And it just depends on the day. It's really just an ebb and flow. But my gosh, I've had some extremely loyal fans that have followed me from like the in the Heights days, from the from Aladdin days, and like even some fans from Japan that like one who is is I, I just love her so much. Her name is Miki. I was in Japan and she like met me because she had sent me this package that didn't arrive to the theater and it was stuck in customs. So she passed it off to me at um, in Japan when I was there at like Shibuya Crossing. It was just so crazy. I was just thinking like, this is insane. She's known me for like 10 years now. And so it, you know, I think you just like, you trust your gut and you know that, um, you, you you understand what their intentions are and, and it's 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 a it's a it's a beautiful beautiful thing it really is all right let's talk about blood love what the hell is this <laughs> <laughs> there's so many descriptives well, well on the rocks. Yeah. blood love is a vampire pop opera and it is about valerie blood love played by carrie sharp and she is the vamp looking for something more and Courtney Reed and I play her best friends, Cleo and Ezra. That's so and we cute. Sort of, yeah, oh my gosh, we play her best friends. And the music of this show is 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 it's just so good. And I think the show is campy, it is fun, it is sexy. It is just something that like you can really sink your teeth into. Uh, uh, <laughs> All the critics are going to be using that one for the, for the review. <laughs> no, but really though, and I I knew I knew I we were they were throwing around names of, of who can like play this role of 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 um, Cleo, and I said Courtney Reed it has to be Courtney Reed. I love that. It has to be Courtney <laughs> Reed. Um, honestly, a because I love her, but b because of what it is, and and I, I again like. This show, um, you know, the the team that put together the show is is you know they're the next generation. They're, they're, they're the next. They're, they're, they've really put together a really interesting and 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 powerful show. And I'm I'm happy that it's it's getting you know the flowers and getting the iterations mm-hmm. and getting it to come to New York City. So I'm thrilled to be to be back in it, and I'm thrilled with the people that are joining it. And it, it's just you know it's about the new. Twenty twenty four is about the new, and it's about the it's about the the next step. So I'm I'm really thrilled for this for this Joe's Pub. Now you're both very very busy. What makes you say yes to a project like this? It's a one night only. Um, what's the rehearsal process even like for this? Once I sent the music tracks, I, I was like yes. <laughs> yes, once I heard the songs, like mm. it's Courtney. As Courtney told you, her pop princesses. This is pop music, and it is like it's right up. It's right up our alley. I'm a I'm a pop aficionado too. So like I I love it. And um, Daniel Leclerc is one of my best friends. So I I I am always supporting whatever ideas he has. And this one happens to be just so 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 delicious. So yeah. And what ha- like when have you been able to rehearse the show? We haven't yet. Next week. Oh. oh. That's a quick rehearsal process. I think that kind of we, stuff is shocking right. to the fans yeah. that haven't done theater before yes. that you all can just like, oh, we'll just throw it together. We'll listen to the tracks. We'll show up for a couple hours and then we'll just do a show. I think that's <laughs> Let amazing. me tell you something. The chemistry, the chemistry will be key and the chemistry is there. It's going to come together. It's going to be great. Um, because Courtney Reed is a 
phenomenal human being, actress, star, superstar. And, you know, the music team, Drew Carroll leading it, Carrie Sharp, Aaron Baum, everybody's just so, so, so dang good. And uh, these music, they're, rock, they're rockers. You know, these musicians are ready and we're all ready to, to, to dig into it. So can't wait to see you G- January 15th. Well, and like throwing yourself into something, something both, you know, having done understudy and swing work, you know, that's probably the most terrifying job on Broadway, I would imagine. Good evening, um, everyone. In five minutes, we will do our aerial rehearsal on stage with Michael. In five minutes, we'll do our aerial rehearsal on stage with Michael. Thank I'm you. so sorry. That's I'm so excited. Like- Yes. No, no you're no, 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 no. you're adding to the yes. show, not detracting from this it. This is like, for real, y'all. This is, this is yeah. real and live stakes, from Broadway. The stakes have never been, the stakes have never been higher. The stakes have never been higher in a podcast, ever. Um, well, I, I, I both know you. Uh, both you um, have to have to prepare for your shows tonight, so we won't keep you anymore. Um, for our audience, we are going to get a sneak peek at Blood Love at the end of the show. Um, so, uh, Courtney, tell everybody where you want them to find and follow you. Rhodes Reed, R H O D E S. Oh, there it is. I G. Follow me on IG. <laughs> <laughs> and Jelani. You can catch me at it's Jelani Remy, I T S J E L A N I R E M Y on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you both. I know how busy you are, and it was such a treat for both of us. Um, <laughs> and go to Joe's Pub on the 15th of January to see Blood Love, and then, of course, hit up Broadway to see Moulin Rouge and Back to the Future. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious. How did cheers, you... everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. Happy cheers. New Year. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. How did you forge this friendship with... D- Jelani then. So last year in March, there was a uh, inaugural Broadway cruise, which is actually going to, there's going to be another one in two months. Um, and, uh, and the great thing about it, and it, and it just shows like everything we just learned about Jelani is um, it, it, that's who he is. I mean, I love listening to music and listening, hearing voices. And he was actually a backup singer on that cruise. So there were all these big oh, stars it, interesting. and he was a backup singer and I could hear him. Um, and I just kept watching him and, and there was one performance that he saw me actually watching him and enjoying him. And then afterwards I went up and said, hi. And he said, oh, I saw you enjoying it. It was really great. It got, like, it got me inspired that, that somebody was smiling and, and obviously listening to me. And I was like, yeah, what the hell are you doing being a backup singer? And, uh, he was like, well, because they asked me and I'll show up, you know, I'll show up and and look, I got to be with all these great people because there were amazing people on that. Jeremy Jordan was on that cruise. Kristen Chenoweth was on Lena Hall, like all these, uh, Michael Cerverus, like all these great performances, performers. And, uh, yeah, and he was just perfectly happy to sh- be on the cruise and fill in wherever. Um, there was a lot of sort of improvising for them, too. They were like, oh, Jaylani, would you come and do this, you know, sh- song with me? And then they would learn it and then go up and sing it. Um, and then um, because we kept having those conversations on the, on the ship during the week, um, when it was over, um, I said, like, I just mentioned to him, I said, I'd. I want to, you know, I want to continue to know you. And he was like, well, meet us at Glasshouse Tavern. And for those of you who want, are in New York and you want to have a Broadway experience, Glasshouse Tavern's in um, the Broadway area and it's a great restaurant. But downstairs is this bar. And after the shows every night, um, the people that are in the shows go there. So when we walked in last week, um, he, Jelani was like, that's the Lion King crew over there. And that's the Shucks crew over there. And that's, you know, and, and they all know him. So, yeah. It's so we've continued the friendship because I just think he's a really special human yeah. being, and uh, and I wanted to stay in touch with him, and and I just always you know message him on IG and um, and he messages back, so like we're just becoming friends, and yeah, and so to be able to go to see his show and and uh, and go backstage again and meet the cast and Roger Bard and you know and and all of them, uh, it was just yeah, it's just it's a great friendship to have mm-hmm. because he's a wonderful person, but then there's perks. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And God knows where. He's going to go from here, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay. So you saw your Broadway run of shows. Yes. Uh, spill the tea. So um, five shows in four days. And uh, so the first show, I brought my playbills, by the way. I brought my playbills. <laughs> Props. Um, if, if, there, if you're going to New York between now and July 7th and there's, you can only see one show, it's got to be Merrily We Roll Along. Um, Take out a mortgage on your house. Merrily We Roll Along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it'll be hard to get a ticket, too. But, um, but this is starring... Um, the amazing Daniel Radcliffe, who 
Will, I think Daniel Radcliffe is just going to be able to be Harry Potter for the rest of his life and then just add on to that because even though he's not really the lead of the show, um, he, he gets, you know, stop the show applause. Um, and, uh, and, and deservedly so. He's really good. I was very impressed. Um, Jonathan Groff, though, to me is quintessential leading man Broadway. Like, he can dance. He can sing. He's got charisma. Um, he's beautiful, um, yeah. and uh, and is a gay man, you know, an openly gay man playing a straight role. You know, like Broadway does that a little bit better than the other media, but yeah. um, but just amazing. And then and then um, uh, Lindsay Mendez, who's in it, uh, the third. Those three people have so much chemistry, um, and it's a show that wasn't always successful either. But it has it's great never music. really been successful. So what changes do they make to make it work? Because everybody loves it. Yeah, they tightened it up. Um, they made the first they added some humor to the first act um you know Sondheim shows tend to notoriously be tough first acts like not that they're bad or anything but because he just throws up all the details yeah. in the first act and then pulls them all together in the second act so you have to hang in there um, those of you in the streaming age you have to hang in there yeah. you can't watch one show and get out <laughs> watch 15 minutes and say I don't like it so merrily we roll along amazing Sondheim Sondheim is is more popular now than ever really yeah. he's got like three shows yeah. and on Broadway right now that are hugely uh, popular. So then I always try to do a, make sure I do a play because it's very easy for me to just do musicals, mm -hmm. but I love, I love straight plays. There's this great uh, play on Broadway called Appropriate. Um, unfortunately, a short, shorter run, like most of the plays, but um, Sarah Paulson. I can't believe you got to see her on my stage. My first time getting to see her live. And, you know, she's got this reputation. I'm already, like, you know, get a little emotional about it. She was amazing. But they're doing a little bit of a disservice to the show. Because it is all you hear about is Sarah Paulson, which is okay, deservedly so. It's okay, but it's not great. Corey Stoll is in the show. For people who watched um, um, House of Cards, um, he was great in House of Cards. Um, for people who watch Billions, he's on Billions. Just a great actor um, and, and should get the same note as she's getting. The whole cat, Elle Fanning's in it, made her Broadway it, debut. Well, in I have not you have not heard, heard one thing yeah. about Elle Fanning being in the show. And wow, <laughs> really, she has this quirky, like, young she's great. sort of, yeah, she's so good. Um, so welcome to the stage, Al Fanning. Um, great debut. But the whole cast from the, there's a couple little kids in it. The daughter in it should probably, should definitely be nominated. Um, but nobody's talking about the rest yeah. of the cast. So yeah. don't just think you're going to see a Sarah Paulson, you know, uh, jam. You know, you're seeing a great <laughs> show um, and a great cast all the way through from top to bottom. Then after seeing Appropriate, which was very heavy, it's about, you know, three siblings who haven't been speaking to each other for the past 10 years, and they go back because their dad has died, and they have to take care of the house, and so all the stuff plays out around, you know, what they're you know, inheriting that and money. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we needed a musical <laughs> after that show. <laughs> so then, as you've all heard about Jelani Remy and um, Back to the Future, um, which is, again... I'm picking on the streaming age, but like I do think people watch 15 minutes of things and then they give up because, if, oh, it's if, on my if TV, that, if even, that. Yeah. And that's ridiculous because art, true artists, anything that's good is about a story arc. Yep. And you have to like let it, let it develop, see what they were doing with it. And to be honest with you, if I had gone to uh, Back to the Future and had with that mindset, after 10 or 15 minutes, I would have been done. Because I'll, I'll tell you what they do, which is wonderful, but I wasn't expecting it. I thought I was going to go watch the movie redone. Yeah. But what, like he, like Jelani mentioned, is they have they they brought vaudeville to it, and um, so what they, what it is is it's tongue in cheek, and so they're playing That's on. That's how it works. Yeah, then. yeah, and it's a dorky movie to begin with, right? Like Michael J. Fox and yeah. um, and the the amazing um, cast of that movie. But um, now you've got Roger Bart, and if you're not using Roger Bart's ability to 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 be um, to improvise, then you're missing out on something. And he and the young guy playing Marty McFly, um, they every night they're doing shtick in the middle of the show, and they'll stop and they'll just start, you know, they'll go what what what, and they just play off of each other. And I met him, um, uh, Corey likes uh, after the show, and I and a tribute to the young man because he's you know he's new to all this. Yep. Um, what I asked him, you know, I, I said like, wow, it must be just great being in this huge show and one amazing thing. And you get to be with Roger Bart and he stopped me and he just said, you know what? Like, that's the single best thing about this perform this being in the show is that I get to learn from Roger Bart, comic master, really, you know, great. But the show after you, 
after I got used to the fact that it's tongue in cheek, then I was like, this is fantastic. And honestly, not just because I know him, because he's become a friend, but uh, Jelani's number is is the showstopper. Right. It's like 15 minutes into the show. It's when the show became the show for me, and uh, he's fantastic. And I'm rooting for that best, you know, the best featured actor in a musical nomination for him at the Not A Win. Um, so then um, we had Silly Saturday. So, um, and this is like one of those things when you have friends, if you ask them that are, you know, theater critics or whatever, you really have to know what they like. Yeah. Because I had kind of snooty friends. I call them the snooty theater friends that were like, oh, you know, well, if you get really, really high and you go and you suspend any kind of like, you know, interesting quality, then you might like these shows. Um, but I like silly humor. I love Monty Python, stuff like that, which, you know. So these two shows were great. I'm so glad we went. Um, the first one's Gutenberg the Musical. Um, again, another short run. Um, but it stars Josh Gad, who's one of my favorite comedic actors ever. And if you don't know who Josh Gad is, he was the voice of Olaf in Frozen. Um, he, was, and he, he was the movie version of Beauty and the Beast. Beauty, uh, uh, Le, Le Fou, right? Le, Le, Le Fou, yeah. Um, one of the funniest human beings on the planet. Um, and then, ov- obviously, Andrew Reynolds. And they, if you don't know, they they were the two originals in uh, Book of Mormon. And they have chemistry, and they have such a great yeah. friendship off, off stage. Yeah, yeah. and, and it, that's what shows through. So the, the, the show is about um, these two guys from New Jersey who wrote a musical, and they rented out a theater on Broadway to show it to producers. So they're actually, like, doing the bit, bits of their show, but then they're talking to the audience and explaining it. And that just gives them all this opportunity to improvise. And I think if anybody didn't like the show, they didn't like that. Yeah. But what I loved about it was they were clearly just enjoying themselves. They interacted with the audience. Somebody in the audience would make a noise and they'd talk to them. And you know, it was just, uh, it was just really, really fun. Um, and to see those two comic actors with their, their, uh, their, just, you know, their, their timing. Uh, with each other and, and clearly like you said they're friends so they just were really enjoying each other they're cracking each other up the whole show it was very fun um, and then the, the Silly Saturday finale was the night show which was Shucked um, I don't know if you've all heard about it but you know Shucked is sort of a you know it's, it's been a, on the morning shows yeah. it's uh, you yeah. know, the, the Tony performance everything mm-hmm. every, but again like you might like actually to tell you the truth at, at uh, intermission I, I was like Okay, I'm having a really good time. I'm laughing a lot, but I'm not sure. That, I don't really understand why the show's getting accolades. Mm. Um, and uh, but then you find out it's like it's like a funny version of a Sondheim show. Like the first act was just throwing this stuff up, and then for those of us who are older and remember Hee Haw, it's really Hee Haw. It's an episode of Hee Haw for the first half, and then it all comes together in the second half where you're laughing through tears. There's, I I cried I, through most of the second half because. Th- Again, they based the humor in character. Yeah. Like it wasn't just telling jokes. You know, it was, and, and even on Hee Haw, for those who remember it, the, everybody had characters. Mm-hmm. Like you knew these people, yeah. and that's why they were funny. The the big disappointment though was that Alex Newell, who ran the Tony for it, was out of the show because uh, their voice was as was, you know, having um, I'm having sure health issues, hitting those notes night after night. Yeah, and and Alex is is an amazing talent for again yeah. those of you who don't know Alex from Glee and and uh, and and several other things um, on Broadway, Once on this Island, and Alex is a is a non-binary person mm-hmm. and um, and goes back and forth mostly playing female characters and so this is a female character was nominated for best feature actor and won best feature actor in a musical so you know so theater is sort of like you know it's changing and it's and it's kind of leading the way in that way but but definitely i would recommend shucked uh for those of you who need a great laugh and you know and for something to get to your heart and Mm -hmm. it really like i think a lot of people were worried that it was making fun of uh midwestern people and it doesn't it makes it makes fun with them not of them so, um, so yeah, at a great theater week, um, there's a lot of good theater to there's see. So much to see in like four days, and you did it all. Yeah, and then you know, then as we talked about on New Year's Eve, I got to see Aaron Tveit do a, a New Year's Eve show at Fifty Four Below, the best cabaret venue in the world, because um, there's no pole in the middle. Because yeah. if you've ever been to cabaret, there's always a pole in the middle of the room, right? Like I always get stuck behind it. Uh, none, none of that at Fifty Four Below. But yeah, it was it was an amazing trip, and and Giolani was a big part of that. So. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Thank yeah. you for joining us today. Where can people find and follow you? Oh, Instagram, Michael.Ferreira. Um, 
you know, or out at the Abbey, <laughs> please. Yeah. Or at the Abbey in West Hollywood, but also out athlete fund.org. Um, it's a great new nonprofit and, uh, we're looking forward to a big year in 2024 and beyond. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you audience for joining us in 2024 for our kickoff show for the new year. Um, again, follow us at on the rocks radio show.com. Uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy, stay tipsy. And we're going to show you, um, the trailer for blood love to find out a little bit more of what is about that. And we'll see you next time. Did you fall in love? We started this show a couple years ago, wanting to create a really immersive vampire themed experience. And now it's developed into a full 90 minute musical. We really pride ourselves on the show being immersive. The dancers are happening around you and there's not spectators and performers. We are all in this together. It's a completely original show. We really wanted to bridge the gap between pop music and musical theater. I think an audience can expect to see something they've never seen before and feel something they've never felt before. This has been another episode of On The Rocks. Tweet me and slide into my DMs on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at ontherocksradioshow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week, stay fabulous.